I have been reviewing a lot of mini PCs in the last couple of years. The reason is very simple. I'm always searching for a cheap solution to play like say old school games. But when it comes to these mini PCs, they also have one thing in common. They're like really cheap. And I love cheap by the way. But the thing is, I just wanted to take a close look at something that's maybe like five times the price of these things. What can we able to play with it and how far can we push it? Combining this and we're going to make ourselves like the emulation beast. Or is it absolutely a waste of money? <laughs> but I wanted to take a close look at the Mini Forum, the UM590. In the main review, I also like to take a close look at the Windows Gaming, but I just want to particularly like go deeper into the emulation part in combination with some Bodashera. Because Bodashera gives me more like a game console feeling when you're slapping it inside a very powerful device. Another thing you can get yourself is basically like in kit. And what do I mean with the kit? So nowadays we have the option to get yourself like a very nice case like this. And in the inside we're going to find stuff like and two controllers. And they are like ready to go. To show like your high quality chemical PlayStation 2 controllers with a dongle. And inside we're going to get ourselves a hard drive. And what is very interesting with the power keypad for example. We can just plug it in. You only need to add your stuff and you're ready to go. So that's very convenient if you ask me. It even comes with a very nice protection plush. <laughs> you pay a lot for basically like a couple of things. They even include like some manuals to say like how you need to add stuff, how you can need to connect to the internet. But this is like a more easy way to go to. And the crazy thing is they even sell it in all kinds of versions. And yeah, think about like all kinds of formats like 500 gigabyte, one terabyte, two terabyte. You can just grab yourself an hard drive. You don't need to buy anything and just slap your files on and you're ready to go. Okay, so next up, what we need to do is very simple. Get yourself the part that you want to have. For example, the hard drive, the USB or the SD card. We're going to convert some Podocera on it and when it's ready we can just slap it in and start messing around with it and build ourselves like Retro Emulation Beast. But another thing it can do is removing the NVMU and getting a docking and just basically flash Podocera on here and just only use Podocera on the PC. But for me like using an NVMe or just an SSD inside here would be like a superb way but a very expensive way. You can just get your 2TB drive very cheaply and if you're going to add bottle share to it you can just play so many games. So let's get into it and what can we do with this device. With cheap devices we can also play this without any problem. But the thing is with a more powerful machine we can run it on higher resolution so it looks so much better. Let's get into Dead Alive 2, the reason why, because this is a more demanding game, we're going to have the same resolution and all the other things, but you will see it will dip a little bit here and there. So with Sega Saturn, let's start with some higher resolutions, but also very simple, just see if we can play some normal games, two dimensional stuff, and later on we're going to get into the three dimensional stuff, just to see how the performance is with all of these games.
Time for a different system. We're still with the Sega with the Sega Dreamcast. And I must say that I wanted to check out how far we can push this, how far resolution and how great will it run on Bodicera. Get ready! Adventure. Don't forget to take advantage of those subs. Let the battle begin. Another thing I wanted to try out, let's check out some other emulators. And yeah, there is a difference between the PP, SSPP, and then we have like the other version. And I must say like we do have like some cool bezels when it comes to the different emulator. But looking at the performance on native resolution, it looks so much better. I'm not the biggest fan of the bezel to be honest, but hey, it works better now. And we have a way better, let's say overall experience when it comes to playing this game. Another thing is I just wanted to try out some other games, two-dimensional stuff, and I can tell you already, like, it was just a particular problem with this game, because all the other stuff that runs pretty damn good, and even if you're going to set it up to higher resolutions, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, it's still basically like a collection of an arcade game you're going to play through another emulator, but yeah, you're getting the point. Round one. Fight. Hey. Let's start the PlayStation 2 with some Burnout, one of my favorite games to play. But when we go to push it to 1080p, you can see it's absolutely unplayable with the Bodicera emulator. So unfortunate, we need to switch it back to all the way to 720p, still upscaled. And what we're going to get is way better performance, not perfect. I still notice some hiccups here and there, so maybe you need to put it on 480p just to get like this best performance overall experience when it comes to playing this game. But going back to the 1080p and of course two dimensional games are not that demanding and with this particular one it has no problem whatsoever. Live and let die. Fight! But let's get back to the three dimensional games and let's see how it will run when it comes to some adventure games. One of the very funny games, Jack and Dexter. And again, like, it's a very cool experience to play this game actually on 720p. I don't think it will handle 1080p that great, so we're still limited when it comes to this mini PC. This device is a communicator. With it, my father and I can give you advice at any time during your quest. These floating egg-shaped things are precursor or... <coughs> This is a power cell. 
Okay, so into PlayStation 3 gaming, I just wanted to check out how it will run. But I'm gonna be honest, I was a little bit disappointed because when you're going to do a side by side comparison with the Windows emulator and the Bodicera, I needed to load up this game and it took freaking forever. But actually getting into the gameplay, I can tell you, I was quite surprised to see that it actually runs pretty good when it comes to this particular game. And of course, some Bodicera. Another system I wanted to check out is Autonomous Wave. We have tried this so many times on these cheap boxes, also like mini PCs that cost like maybe a fifth of the price of this device we're using now. But I just also wanted to check out how will it look if we're going to do some crazy upscaling. Will it still be playable and how does it actually look? And how it looks? Oh boy, it looks really great. A system I've been bitching on for a long time is N64 because it's quite difficult to emulate on let's say cheaper Android boxes and if you're going to get into mini PCs we cannot really upscale it whatsoever so I just wanted to see how far we can upscale it and how will the overall performance be. With so much power, you just need to have like at least the option to play some of Zero GX from the GameCube on the Dolphin emulator. And I can tell you, yep, we are able finally to play this. If we're going to upscale it, I think we're not going to get the best result, but when it comes to native, we can still play it.
slapping some bottles here on this mini PC, we do have like some amazing performance, especially when you're looking at the older system, we can upscale it to crazy resolutions. In the end, like it is way more powerful than all the other models. But is it really worth five times or two times or three times the prices of all the other stuff we have reviewed here on the channel? Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, let me know in the comments, and it will be great to see you in the next video.